The first time you see a hob in the written patent office is in 1856 by a gentleman named Sheely. And then on the right hand side, you can see the disc and it shows the hob in both uh, side view and top down view. And you can see that lead angle on the, uh, on the hob. Let's jump forward and see what it looks like today in practice. This is the column on the Fouter and this is a spiral bevel gear. And what it mates to is this hob head that holds the head right here. It's awfully difficult to line up these holes. They can all rotate in this, uh, in the faceplate behind it. So I just put a piece of cardboard in here as a temporary tearaway gasket, basically, to align the bolts so the two people can come mount it and it get at least two nuts started, and then you can pull the gasket away. So it's a great way to align stuff and it makes things real easy. Okay, so we pulled the tearaway gasket out after we got the bolts lined up. It took two of us. And then we aligned the vernier scale to the, the Hobbs lead angle right here. So this vernier scale, uh, sometimes there's a 90 degree coming both ways, but uh, the way it's read is there's zero. You read the main scale, which is in degrees here. So there's one and two degrees. We're drawing to 233. And then you see where the lines match and line up from the minute scale. And they're parallel right there at... Uh, uh, we're just under 35, and there's your match. So it looks like we're at uh, 238 or so, 2 degrees 38 minutes. So just have to tighten the last bolt, and you're good. But to get that fine increment, you just have to prop up the end of the hob head and make a fine adjustment here with the uh, hob head slide mechanism. Here's uh, the front of the hop head showing where the location of the sight glass is. We put new sight glasses in to seal it up and also so you can see the level very easily. This is the front cavity and then here is the rear cavity that has the big reduction gear. So those made a big difference in what we were able to see and how we can uh, keep this well maintained. So once you get your hop head mounted and everything's all sealed up and you're uh, ready to go for your hob, <clears throat> you can use the flywheel, just turn it around so that you have the uh, keyway here so it's easy to see. And this is a fresh new hob. Now, one of the things about these hobs, just in the way they label them, is on this outer rim, this is a, this is a machine, precise machined surface here uh, to be flat. And it also has engraving on it, some very key engraving. Now, usually the box lists almost all the details of the hob. It's a module, the material the hob is made out of, the coating on the hob, the size of the hob, 50, 70, 22. But it doesn't list a very key parameter, and that's the lead angle. Hard to see here. I'll, give a, I'll get a close-up shot of it so you can see it, but it's, it's right there. And uh, that lead angle needs to be set on this vernier caliper. That's why we've been talking about it. So the next step is to go ahead and mount this hob. And the arbor has a pull stud that's in this hob head. And this large nut here on the end has an area for lubrication. And this needs to come off. It's got a very large, very tapered piece and a big bronze bushing in there. So that's got to slide just right. It's got some markings on it. So the hob, that's a little spacer here. I'm not sure which side it needs to go on, but the hob cutting teeth these, uh, there's a large number of gashes on this particular hob, but the cutting teeth cut going in this direction. And this is, this is uh, the correct rotating direction, right hand clockwise direction for this hob on the, that goes on this hob head.
and that fits quite nicely. Now your gear needs to come back up in here so you see how this is uh, tapered in just a little bit. The, the nut, the way it goes in, it's uh, chamfered in, excuse me, just a little bit. So all this needs to fit in there and uh, you need to be able to get your blank up against the hob. So the job is to, uh, I believe it's where it needs to go. I don't know that we need this spacer, uh, although. Now, this is all the way in there and we'll probably cut right here because we can get the gear blank right into here. But if we were always using this part of the hob, what about this part? Well, this entire assembly that's back inside the hob head, uh, you can loosen this in between a set of gears, making a set of gears, and you can push this whole entire hob head out this direction so you can evenly wear against the entire length of this hob head. That's why I have a nice like, long hob head. It's really nice because is anything it takes time to set up and uh, put a new head in here and so you want to be able to use it as long as you can before you have to stop the process take it back out get a new hob and put it in whether it's to sharpen it or put a new one in at the end of the life so that's uh that's mounting the hob we got a little space here now all this needs to be lubricated pretty good and i'll tighten that a little later but we're uh we're coming together nicely on this machine. Again, there's lots of little lubrication points. There's one right here. And the cavity inside here, it has that spiral bevel gear, two of them at, 40, at uh, 90 degrees from each other. So this reflects the oil that's in that cavity that's made between the hop head and the machine here. And then on the other side, there's another cavity down here that uh, has another sight glass on it, and it uh, lubricates a rather large reduction gear that's in that side. So all of it's to get the transmission 40 to one uh, and machine constant eight all set up so it works just fine. And this is getting really close and ready to go. So we'll mount our blank right here and we'll be able to do a little touch off drill and and check it. So write your lead angle down before you put it in the machine because you'll have to take it all the way back apart because that's the only place it's usually written. Also there's several classes of hobs that go from I believe D all the way up to AAA or maybe even 4A so this is a pretty high quality hob. For this machine it's as good as you really need for the type of work we're doing here. So uh, Cool. So this uh, hob has an involute shape in its teeth, but it goes without saying you could also put uh, a shape in there that would allow you to cut a sprocket or a spline shaft, even an involute spline shaft. They're a little different from a regular hob. So there are several things you can do with this machine. Uh, this is the arbor. This is the arbor where the gear blank goes. And you can either mount it on one of these uh, for small ID gears, or you can mount it on any of these bolt patterns. As long as you get it very, very, very concentric, we're talking half tenth, uh, so five tenths is, is uh, okay-ish. Uh, two tenths is even better. Uh, I think this platter is two tenths. So you need to get this all synchronized and concentric, and that'll allow you to cut a really nice gear. So we took that hop head off, which is uh, quite interesting. It allows you to cut uh, worm gears. It has radial and tangential, uh, basically the tangential hop head for fly cutting a worm gear is what you do with that hop head. But we changed that out and put on this hop head is, is used for involute cutters for cutting gears on gear blanks or sprockets, or splines, spline shafts. 
And this is uh, what the entire face of that machine looks like, where the hob head goes. So you can see the this area right here around the spiral bevel gear that forms a chamber that's sealed inside the machine and into the hob head. And so this is an area where there's a little fill tube up here on the hob head and then there's a little sight glass we've been looking at on the other machine. So this is a very nicely hand scraped surface here. You can tell, just you can tell by, you can kind of see that characteristic pattern of hand scraping. So that, uh, that's what affects the seal. But I, I will tell you, they leak, um, and that's just a part of it. This is the same exact module hob as the one we just mounted on uh, Olive. This one's on Jersey, but it has really large gashes, and there's a large space between them. And, and the reason is, is this one's near its end of its life, and you can tell um, in these gashes here, uh, that it's been sharpened multiple times. So there's not a lot left in this hob, but it's quite useful for what uh, we're going to be doing with it. This is the hob on Elk, and it has more life uh, than the other one we just saw, but it's also spaced out in this uh, hob head quite nicely. It's been getting some use lately on some spur gears. This is kind of the business end of the hob head as far as adjustments. You can either run with or without a flywheel. It goes on here. There's a little taper here if you want to put it on. And then this loosens. This is the pull rod. So you get all this snuck and you, you pull the arbor in tight with this uh, square shaft, square ended shaft. It's round in the machine. And snug it up with this left-handed metric nut. Uh, these two nuts just hold it in the machine and uh, for the assembly of this head itself. This is what you use to move. This entire large disc moves in, in and out of the machine. There's a little graduated scale here so you can see where you are. To something to keep track of. So this slides nicely back and forth. And then if you come down here and look, there's another square headed bolt and this clamps this entire assembly, uh, it, it clamps the entire assembly tight when you, when you have it where you want it. But when you need to adjust where the hob cuts the gear going this direction, you adjust this bolt. And there's a little, kind of like a woodruff slot cut in this circle, and this bolt rides in it and it pulls that, uh, pulls the shaft in and out this whole this whole big slug goes in and out of the machine to make that adjustment the adjustment screw in the upper right there is in a very key location it's actually on a radius to where the flywheel mounts and we'll see why that's important here's the business end of the hob head on elk and it's got a flywheel and you can see the mechanism in there that we just looked at but you want to make an adjustment without having to take this flywheel off. So sure enough, you can make that adjustment right there on, on this hop head through this hole in the flywheel. Pretty clever design.